Greg is his master in National Miami University and his PhD in University of New Master. And he has an uh, important research in the University of California, Riverside. And uh, today uh, he's going to talk about the uh, mosquito protection control. Let us go. National Mosquito Control Center that uh, has the opportunity to share with you our uh, current work on uh, mosquito control and uh, mosquito virus interaction. And uh, this picture is actually taken by uh, my PhD student. This is, uh, and this is a mosquito infected with uh, Zika virus. Uh, as you all know, the mosquito is responsible for several infectious diseases such as malaria. Dengue and Zika and so on. And actually, in Taiwan, we encountered a several uh, serious dengue outbreak in the past two decades, uh, particularly in uh, the year of 2014 and 2015. Uh, actually, if we look at uh, our neighboring country, for example, Philippines, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, and Indonesia, they also encountered uh, some uh, kind of a serious dengue outbreak in the past. 10 years, and the case is between uh, 100,000 to uh, 150,000. But also in Vietnam and Cambodia or Singapore, they also encounter some stream of dengue, so indicating that uh, this uh, virus uh, problem is uh, not only in, in Taiwan, but also in several uh, tropical and uh, subtropical uh, countries. However, that the uh, mosquito growth disease control uh, strategy is mainly rely on these three approaches. So the first is to develop a vaccine, but we all know that currently there is no effective vaccine for malaria, dengue, or Zika. Uh, so the second approach is to develop drug, and uh, again, there is no uh, uh, effective medication for dengue and Zika. So this, uh, in the control uh, strategy is mainly rely on better control. And as uh, we have uh, listened to a, a, a several talks this morning and in the early afternoon, that we all know that uh, in, the, in, the, in the traditional way to uh, control the mosquito growth disease is to spread insecticide. But we all know that overuse of insecticide were resulting in the resistance of uh, the mosquito to the insecticide. So uh, several uh, novel approaches have been proposed. For example, the transgenic mosquito strategies or the biological control strategies such as bacteria based control or the, uh, the, uh, the uh, bacteria that uh, uh, this morning Dr. Wang has proposed. Uh, but uh, even, even that, that we have, uh, if, if we want to achieve this goal, I mean, the, the, the goal is to uh, control the mosquito bone disease, that we have to have more better understanding uh, about the mosquito, in, uh, the control of the mosquito. <coughs> So when the mosquito taking a blood meal, uh, some signal will secrete it to the brain, and the brain will secrete it, uh, some hormone, and one of the well study hormone is uh, OEH, the ovarian exotropic hormone. And OEH will then transform into ovary, and then that will stimulate the, uh, uh, the secretion of ectisome. And then the ectisome will transform into a fat body, which is the author of the mammalian liver. And inside the fat body, the ectisome will convert into 20 hydroxy ectisome called 20E. And 20E will then stimulate the production of several eucotin uh, precursors called YPP. And uh, there are several eucotin uh, precursors actually in, in, uh, in mosquitoes. And one of the uh, the oil study and uh, the abundant YPP is BG, the bacteria And then these YPP were then uh, uh, transformed into ovary and resulted in the uh, development of the egg. And this process is called a bacteriogenesis. So what I'm talking about here is that the, uh, the hormone regulation of the bacteriogenesis, however, there should be uh, some other signaling or some other ways that also control this process. So, uh, 
in the past uh, 20 years, there are several studies indicating that uh, there should be some uh, signaling pathway involved in the regulation of heterogeneity. So one of the first study uh, pathway is target of recognizing signaling pathway. Uh, they have been shown to be involved in the activation of egg development. And the function of tall pathway in the mosquito is uh, like uh, when the mosquito is taking a blood meal, the high level of amino acid <coughs> in the mosquito body is going to be in the hemolymph that will uh, activate the expression of several amino acid transporter. And that will then uh, result in the activation of tall chemists. And the, top, the activation of tall chemists will then uh, activate the phosphorylation of SSK, which is the downstream target, target of tall chemists. And then at the end, that will result in the production of BG and that will control the material genesis. Uh, that will control the egg development. And, but we think there should be uh, other signaling involved in this regulation. So after a circle screening, then we find a potential candidate called green signaling pathway. And actually, this pathway has been well studied in Prosophila and is basically uh, involved in the regulation of development. And the green signaling pathway consists of two forms. So in, in the left hand side is the inactivation form, which consists of a uh, transmission protein called Rizal. And in the activation form of green signal pathway, uh, there is a complex consists of several protein, and then that will result in the degradation of beta coupling. So once the uh, this uh, once the green, green pathway is activated, then the, this green protein will bind to Rizal, and that will result in the binding of this complex to Rizal, and that will lead to the the nuclear localization of beta cutting and that will also result in the production of green target genes. So to test this hypothesis, that uh, we do a, a screening in the mosquito antigen gene type, and actually we found there are four result proteins in the antigen gene type. However, only uh, only one, only the result two, is upregulated in the in the mosquito after the blood meal in terms of transitional level and translational level. And next, we uh, examine the uh, localization of uh, Frizzle 2 in the mosquito uh, tissues. And then we find that uh, antigen type Frizzle 2 is highly expressed in the mosquito fed body after a uh, 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 blood meal. And then we also use the RAI to silence the expression of Frizzle 2, and then we are able to silencing the, the expression of result to in the mosquitoes. And the next question we are asking is whether Frizzle is, uh, in the, is involved in the regulation of egg production. So we do a very simple experiment that we are uh, just using our AI to silence the expression of Frizzle or other chemical genes. And then we look at, and then we would look for the egg production in the mosquitoes. So in this graph, one dot indicates the egg number from simple mosquitoes. So here we can see uh, from the uh, control group that the, uh, in, uh, either in the normal or unlikely treated mosquitoes, the average egg number is between 70 uh, egg number per mosquitoes. However, in the uh, uh, positive control, the uh, silencing of tor, that we can see the egg number decrease uh, into uh, 30 uh, eggs per mosquitoes. And the similar result has been given when we silence the result too, that we can see the egg number is decreased, so indicating that result indeed control the egg production. So the next question is whether green pathway or tall pathway are they function in parallel or are they function in sequential? So to answer that, we are using double double silencing, double silencing, uh, we inject. Uh, tor and freezer doctor are they all together and then we look for the egg number. So in this case, uh, in the case of double silencing of tor and freezer, that we see uh, the egg number is similar to the single silencing. So indicating that wing and tor pathway they function uh, in, in, in uh, secretion. And, but the next, next question is who is downstream, who is uh, upstream? 
So we also we will do another simple experiment that we silence the expression of reason two by RAI, and then we examine the expression of uh, SSK for the, uh, the uh, phosphorylation of SSK, which is a doctrine target of power. And then here we can see that when silencing of reason, then we can see a certain degree of inhibition of SSK phosphorylation. So suggested that the uh, uh, free zone, I mean, uh, the wind, wind pathway is uh, upstream of tor. And then we, uh, we next uh, to, to confirm that whether uh, this free zone is indeed uh, in the regulation of production of BG. So we uh, make a, a simple experiment by using in, in visual body culture. So in the case of silence of free zone 2, that we are able to see uh, the inhibition of BG, so that also uh, support our uh, our hypothesis. Uh, so uh, here that we can uh, uh, simply uh, uh, have some uh, idea that uh, there is indeed there is a crosstalk between wind and tor signaling pathway, and uh, particularly the frizzle two and tor they uh, function synergistically to uh, to the uh, regulation of mosquito net production, but we are not satisfied. So uh, we do another, uh, some other screening, and then we find a very interesting uh, target, uh, which is uh, Notch. Uh, actually, Notch was first identified in Drosophila back to the 1927, and uh, in, in that uh, old study that they found that uh, when Newton of Notch, they, they find that there's a Notch in the mosquito, uh, in, in the Drosophila mean. But it is not a different in mosquitoes. So these black things are mosquito eggs. So uh, the mosquito eggs, they uh, turn into black, so we call that metalization, uh, at one or two hours after egg day. So these two are the uh, control group, the naive mosquito, or mosquito treated with uh, black D. However, in the case of not silencing mosquito by RAI, that we can see a large proportion of the eggs they are not able to realize. So what, what, what is the notch sequence? Actually, the notch sequence is a very conserved signaling pathway uh, in the animals that also control uh, many aspects of uh, 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 function, uh, uh, for example, embryogenesis or central nervous system control. And actually, notch is a very large protein uh, in, in mosquito, it's about 300 kil uh, kilodalton. And they consist of a very large uh, EGF repeat, and also they uh, contain uh, uh, light and binding sites. And the activation of notch signaling pathway require, require a binding of notch to its lichen called delta. And after the binding of notch to delta, uh, that will have the two enzymes to, to the processing. And then after this uh, the cleavage by these two enzymes, that will result in the production of the NICD, uh, which is the uh, not intracellular domain. And NICD will act as a transcription factor that, uh, uh, that will result in the production of downstream target genes. So uh, our uh, first experiment is to see whether uh, notch is, is uh, similar to the, uh, the effect of wing or uh, tor. So we again we do a very simple experiment that we silencing notch by our AI and then we calculate the egg number after the silencing. And then we see uh, uh, a down regulation of the, the, the decrease of the egg production for the silencing of notch. And as I, as I mentioned before, that when silencing of notch that we can see a large proportion of the eggs, they are not able to realize. So we calculate the, the Ratio, and then we, we find that uh, almost 50% of the eggs from not silencing mosquitoes are not able to hatch. And then we took those eggs to do the hatching basic. So, in, in a control group, uh, either uh, naive or uh, lightly treated or uh, even poor treated, uh, doctor are very poor treated mosquitoes, the hatching rate is around 90%. So, so which means that almost all the eggs they are able to hatch. However, in the case of not silencing mosquitoes, 
that those non melanized eggs, they are not able to hatch. I mean, this is zero. None of those eggs are able to hatch. Then, even those melanized eggs from March 76 years, the hatching rate is really low. It's lower than 10%. So, which means that uh, when suddenly notch, we can uh, significantly inhibit the mosquito fatality and fertility. But we were asking why. So the, the first idea that comes to our mind is that maybe there's something wrong uh, in, in the eggs. So we do a scanning electron microscope to, uh, to answer this question. So this is a normal, uh, I mean, it's a, a good mosquito eggs. And here we can see in the one part of this egg, they have a beautiful structure called a micropyre. And in the middle of the micropyre, there's a micropyre pore where the sperm can penetrate. So in, 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 the, in, the, in our experiment that we can see uh, either uh, a naive mosquito eggs or lactic treated mosquito eggs, they consist of a very uh, beautiful micropyre with a micropyre pore. However, in the egg from not sensitive mosquitoes, uh, the, 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 these are melanized egg and these So uh, here we can uh, boldly propose that maybe notch is indeed in the control of the formation of micro pile and in consequence that will result in the, the mosquito fertilization. But we need but we need a further evidence. So first we we we, we would treat the mosquito eggs with a, a bleach to remove the chorion and then to make sure uh, whether the So this is in the control, uh, the control groups that uh, after the removal of the chorion group that we can see the developing uh, embryos and then these two dots are eyes. And then we take the, uh, the eggs from uh, virgin mosquitoes and then basically we have these virgin mosquitoes so this, uh, of course there's uh, nothing inside. And the eggs from not sending mosquitoes, uh, either uh, realized eggs or non realized eggs, basically there's nothing inside the, the egg. Uh, and then we further took two uh, molecular markers. So one is the KLC 2.2, which is a kind of casing uh, kind of selection gene, uh, which has been shown to be uh, highly expressed at three to five, uh, three, three to five hours after egg day. So uh, this is a good marker to test whether to examine whether this egg is uh, undergo uh, embryogenesis. So in the case of control, uh, control group eggs, that we can see the highly expressed of, uh, of uh, this casein lysine genes. And in the case of not sensitive mosquitoes, that uh, uh, actually we, we don't see any uh, uh, KLC two point four expression in non melanized uh, mosquito eggs. And those melanized eggs from not sensitive mosquitoes that we can barely see the uh, expression of KLC. And then we took another marker, which is the uh, which is the uh, a mosquito sperm specific gene, and then to test whether these eggs indeed if they have sperm inside. So again, in the control group that we can see the uh, highest rate of the sperm uh, sperm market. And then of course there's nothing in the virgin mosquito eggs, and again also shows the low level of sperm factor uh, genes in the melanized. Egg, and but uh, nothing happened to the non melanized egg, so which means that there is a no sperm inside. But the, the next question we are asking is what is the molecular mechanism underlying these regulations? So, as I mentioned before, that the activation of not signal pathway requires uh, the binding of its, uh, its lichen or delta. So, we are knocking down delta in the mosquito and then we uh, expand. Probably we can see the similar feature as we knocking down notch. However, to our surprise, when knocking down delta, nothing happened. It's totally normal. We can see the work of the melanized eggs, and then the, the hatching rate is absolutely normal. So we are wondering whether uh, there's a, a 
other branch that control this uh, feature. So we go through the litter, the, uh, the several papers, and then we found that uh, there's a non canonical not signal pathway, and it, re uh, it doesn't require the binding of a uh, like delta. And then uh, another, uh, another thing that draws our attention is that their assumption target is a little bit different. One of the target is JK. And uh, it is very, very interesting that uh, it has been shown that uh, the JK signaling is controlled the formation of microfiber in the Josophila A. So we, 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 we guess probably that's uh, how uh, the, uh, the, this uh, notch when regulated in the mosquito. So to test this hypothesis that uh, we uh, first we, we, we started seeing, we, we tried to silence the but JNK but doesn't work. So we instead of silencing by RNA either we use the inhibitor to inhibit the phosphorylation of JNK. So in the case of silencing uh, of uh, in, in inhibition, that we can see a very similar result given, has been given in the case, and then it's very similar to the not silencing of mosquitoes. And then we can see a large proportion of the eggs are not able to melanize, uh, and then also uh, these non melanized eggs they are not able to hatch. And then we also look through the uh, scaling uh, EM to look for the, uh, the structure of the formation of microbial, and then we can see the, we, we see a very similar result that in the case of JK uh, uh, silencing uh, mosquito eggs. Uh, 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 both mealized egg and non mealized egg, that we can see the uh, collapse of the microfiber. So, in, in this case, that we have the uh, idea that they, they are uh, uh, indeed there's a crosstalk between the several uh, signal pathways that control the mosquito reproduction. And how about the, the, the mosquito virus interaction? So as, as we all know that the, the, when the mosquito uh, infected by the dengue, it, it requires uh, an infectious blood meal, and the virus will enter the mosquito mica and then the gland. And in, in these two tissues, they will process uh, several rounds of duplication. So uh, we speculated that there should be a lot of mosquito factors involved in these uh, regulations. So in our preliminary study that we have shown that in the, in the mouse model, so here we use a step one knockout mice. So if the mice infected with dengue virus directly from cell culture that have a slightly hemorrhagic development. However, if the, these mice infected with mosquito saliva, which has been, uh, this mosquito has been infected with dengue virus, that we can see a severe development of the hemorrhage, so indicating that the mosquito factor might uh, involve in, in the dengue virus inactivity. So we do a, a, some screening and then we find a very interesting target, which is a, a, a separate protein called 34 kDA. And then here we show that uh, this uh, 34 kDA is highly, highly expressed in the mosquito cervical gland, uh, uh, not only in the normal blood feeding, but also in the uh, and, and then we, we try to assay the uh, dengue virus E protein production in the case of silencing of 34 kDA cytokine protein. So here we can see that when silencing of 34 kDA protein, that we can barely see the production of dengue virus E protein in the cervical gland and also not expressed in the mosquito saliva. So indicating that 34 kDA cytokine protein uh, is essential for dengue virus E protein production. And the next question we're asking is whether this protein is uh, uh, is, uh, is, is, is essential for the uh, virus infectivity. So to answer that, we use the plug assay. So uh, again, we took the, uh, the mosquito sample from a control group or 34 kDA silencing mosquito, and then we do the plug acid, and then again, you see that with silencing of 34 kDA, you can see uh, strongly uh, uh, 
reduction of the virus in the activity. So that also suggests that the 34K deserogen protein is uh, indeed essential for the virus in the activity. So finally, then we test uh, back in the mouse model. So uh, again, this is the control group that uh, we, we treat the mosquito with uh, uh, dengue virus from third culture. And then this is the, uh, the uh, mosquito that uh, the, the, the mouse that treated with uh, mosquito saliva from a uh, lactin treated uh, mosquito. And here we can see that when the mosquito silencing by uh, RNA by with uh, 34 KDA, then we can barely see the development of the uh, hemorrhage. So indicating that the, the, the 34 KDA cervical protein uh, is a, indeed a, a mosquito host factor that control the uh, the, mosquito, the dengue virus protein and also is essential for uh, dengue virus activity. Uh, I think I'm uh, run out of time, so I will skip the final part. So if uh, we have any uh, questions, that we can ask later. So uh, the conclusion is that uh, 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 indeed that we find several mosquito host factors that are involved in the dengue virus publication and interactivity. So I would like to thank my group members and also thank the support of the uh, National Mosquito uh, Control Center and also uh, thank for the support of the National Taiwan University. Uh, thank you very much and I'm happy to take questions.